In this video, we will explore soils and aggregates. The word aggregate refers to any material or mix of materials that we use as a base or as a driving surface. Think of an asphalt road. What you call paving asphalt includes a mix of rocks and the bitumen and tar which holds all those rocks firmly together. This rock mix is also called the aggregate. The actual bonding tar makes for about 7% or less of the total pavement volume by weight. The remaining 93% is the weight of the rocks, or the weight of the soil in our case. Emulsion polymer is a bonding agent which acts as a binder, very much like the tar does in asphalt roads. Polymer mixes well with many types of soils and with certain types of rocks. When you work with polymer, you could create incredible savings by using the existing suitable in situ soils as your aggregate. In many common projects, polymer accounts for about 3% of the total weight of the resulting pavement. Another 7 to 12% of the weight may go to other additives and mostly to water and the remaining 88 to 90 percent volume by weight will be the soil or the crushed rock which you use to pave the road. When properly prepared and properly applied, polymer bound and compacted aggregate sitting on a proper subbase achieve better CBR characteristics, that's vehicle weight support, than many normal asphalts and it withstands the same PSI as good concrete while maintaining its flexibility, that is, without becoming brittle like concrete. Because polymer doesn't have the high viscosity of asphaltic tar, but flows through a pump very much like water, it becomes critically important that we understand what kind of soils work well with it or how each type of soil behaves. We also need a sufficient grasp of the concept of dynamics of fluids in porous media. Specifically, we need to be mindful of the fact that the adhesive polymer liquid, which flows like water, will run through the spaces in between the rocks to the bottom if it's not properly suspended with the help of a suitable amount of fine particles in between the rocks. That's about 20%. Your hint should be that if you see spaces in between the rocks with the naked eye, you have a serious but fixable problem. We need to understand which soils and rocks work and which do not. Certain soils and rocks are simply unsuitable for paving in general. Some examples of unsuitable soils are as follows large rocks without any smaller particles in between them, um, expansive muddy soils, uh, beach sand. Each of the above fails for different reasons, but what you need to remember is that aggregates with an equal quantity of angular particles of different sizes with, su with a sufficient amount of fines uh, in between the large particles will provide the best recipe for obtaining a well-compacted, homogeneous driving surface without spaces or air bubbles and with sufficient weight support and distribution after compaction. A rock mix which has an equal amount of all sizes all the way to the finest size particles is also called a straight gradation aggregate. Polymer emulsion paving will work perfectly with a straight gradation aggregate with 20% fines. In the United States, this is cheaply available from any crushed rock quarry. <clears throat> Standard soil classifications <clears throat> will be discussed in another chapter. For now, just remember that the grain size, the grain shape, and the amount and characteristics of the clay in the soil particles all play a factor in their suitability for construction. With these soil considerations in mind, let's go back and summarize
polymer emulsion paper. A polymer emulsion is a liquid adhesive which has to be thoroughly mixed into the soil before compaction. When this adhesive cures and hardens through water evaporation, you have an eco-friendly, affordable, hard surface that you can drive on.